now that we have gone through the topic of protein digestion we will look at the pathologies that are associated with protein digestion the question is is there any pathology that is related to the process of protein digestion the answer is yes there are two major genetic pathologies that are associated with the process of protein digestion one of them is hartnup disease one of them is hartnup's disease we'll go through this disease first now what is the problem with hartnup's disease you know there is a transporter that is defective in the intestinal mucosa as well as in the kidney for large neutral amino acids and one of those large neutral amino acids is tryptophan now what happens in this disease what happens is the transporter in the mucosa is defective and tryptophan cannot be transported into the system but if even a little bit that gets transported into the body the same transporter is defective in the kidneys and the kidney does not re retain that amino acid as a result tryptophan and other large neutral amino acids then get eliminated in the urine so there will be loss of amino acids including tryptophan in the urine now what happens when the tryptophan and other larger amino acids are lost in the urine now we come to the symptoms what will happen what sim symptoms will be manifested because there is less tryptophan in the body answer is that the patient will present with pellagra like symptoms which are <clears throat> dementia dermatitis and diarrhea mind it these are pellagra like symptoms not pellagra pellagra is a disease caused by the deficiency of vitamin b3 that is niacin it is caused by the deficiency of niacin it's a vitamin so pellagra is not is caused by niacin and these symptoms are pellagra like symptoms why because tryptophan is the amino acid that is used to synthesize niacin it makes about 1 mg of niacin per day in the body but this is not enough we need more niacin in our diet because niacin is needed in our body but if the transport that is the tryptophan is not giving it and it's not coming from tryptophan then we have to compensate that amount that is coming from tryptophan that is 1 mg per day that is a very small amount but still it is needed in the diet we have to compensate for that and we have to increase niacin in our diet so when tryptophan is not coming in it will not make niacin so patient is more susceptible to pellagra like symptoms remember that pellagra is a nutritional deficiency disease it is due to the deficiency of niacin also remember the 3d's dermatitis dementia 
diarrhea. These symptoms are present in heart nap disease. Now we come to the second major disorder of protein digestion that is cysteinuria. Find it, it is cysteinuria, not cysteinuria. The incidence of cysteinuria is about 1 in 7,000 individuals. Now what's the problem in cysteinuria? In terms of, in terms of biochemistry, the problem is another transporter that is defective and that transporter is also located in the intestine as well as the kidney, similar to tryptophan. But this transporter is for the amino acid that are classified as basic amino acids. Examples of basic amino acids are lysine and arginine. But in addition to basic amino acid, this transporter also transports cysteine. Cysteine, you know, is an amino acid. Now what happens is that in the kidney, the cysteine is not reabsorbed and does not go back into the blood and is excreted in urine. You know that the cysteine contains sulfhydryl group that is also known as thiol group, SH group. This SH group contains sulfur. Now in the presence of free radicals in the urine, this SH group reacts with other elements to form water and the two sulfurs of two cysteine molecules are when exposed, they cross link with each other, forming its dimer. This is time. Cysteine is an amino acid and cysteine is a dimer that is two molecules, two amino acids, cysteine when they cross link together, they form cysteine. Cysteine is also known as dicysteine. Now the cysteine that is formed is relatively insoluble in water and the kidneys cannot excrete it efficiently. So it starts to accumulate and when it accumulates it can give rise to urinary tract infection and it can also cause renal stones. Now the question is, can it be treated? Answer is yes. There is a drug of choice in cysteinuria and this drug is called acetazolamide. acetazolamide. Now what does it do? It helps to raise the pH of the urine and turns the urine alkaline. And cysteine is more water soluble when the medium is alkaline and it becomes soluble, water soluble and then it can easily be removed in the urine. So the drug acetazolamide is recommended along with some dietary advice that is the patient should take a diet low in protein and he should take increased water, a lot of water, he should drink a lot of water, his water intake should be increased and so that the cysteine that is present in the urine can hopefully be excreted out easily. Now this completes our lecture on protein digestion and pathologies associated with it. Now next we will gen study the general amino acid met metabolism and hope to see you soon. Thank you.